Right now, in this Haas tip of the day, we are gonna manually set the tools on this Haas lathe. And a little bit later, we're gonna cover, we're gonna go over some of the essential uh, Haas lathe G codes. Now, if you've got a brand new Haas lathe and you want to get to, to making parts quickly, then you definitely wanna stick around for this. Everything for me begins with my setup sheet. So check this out. I've got a block loaded up. Now, if you're tightening up those tools by hand, Two buttons, some jogging, some measuring, some verifications, a tip direction, and the size of the radius on our tools. That is it, and your Haas lathe will be all ready to cut apart. This is really good stuff. Now we've got four or five different kinds of tools loaded up, and we're gonna manually set those now, and we're gonna learn what we need to along the way. If your lathe has an automatic tool presetter like, like this one, this is not the method that we're gonna be using right now. We're gonna be manually setting, not using the probe. But even if you've got the probe arm, stick around, uh, there's still lots to learn. When we load up a tool, the machine doesn't know where it's at until we tell it. So every time we put a tool into this machine, it might end up in a slightly different position. And we're gonna to have to reset our tool offsets. Now, a tool offset is just a distance, uh, how far that tool is out of line. And on a lathe, the line that we're talking about is our spindle center line. Rule number one, and nothing we talk about is gonna make sense unless we mention this. This is a lathe, and on a lathe, all of our X values are in diameter. So we can forget about the number line that we were taught in school. Uh, we were shown that this is the X and this is the Y, typically in our math classes in sixth grade. Uh, but on a lathe, this is our Z axis. So we've got our, our Z minus heading towards the spindle, Z plus heading away from the spindle. Then we've got our, our plus and minus X values. But even this is incomplete. This is not an X value, it's an X diameter value on a lathe. Here, this will make more sense. We'll show you what's going on on the part that's in our lathe now. This stock is three inches in diameter, 76.2 millimeters. And while this point here is just 1.5 inches, 38.1 millimeters from our center line, we don't call it X 1.5 or X 38.1. We call it X 3.0 or X 76.2 because on lathes, our X values are in diameter. So our X zero is our spindle center line and our Z zero is typically the face of our part. This is how parts are programmed and this is how we're gonna set them up. Now keep that in mind as we jog our turret to a safe location and command tool two into position. Okay, enough theory. Let's go ahead and set that tool offset X value. I'm gonna start the spindle at 250 RPMs by entering 250 and pressing the spindle forward key. Now we can run the spindle faster for smaller parts or when turning aluminum. And we will wanna turn it slower if running a larger part or when cutting harder materials. We will use the hand wheel on 0.001 increment until we make light contact with the outside of our stock. We'll hand jog across the material in the Z axis until it is cleaned up completely. Okay, this is the important part. We need to jog straight away using only the Z axis in the Z positive direction. And we're gonna go far enough to give ourselves some clearance. We can then press reset and stop the spindle. All right, so we skimmed the part, being sure to move only in the Z axis. Now we can navigate and go to our tool offset page. Now we'll wanna highlight the tool offset that we're gonna set. In this case, we're using tool two, so we're gonna set offset two. If you ended up on the work offset page, you can just press the offset button again on a classic control or press the F4 key if you're on an NGC lathe 
to toggle back over to our tool offset page. With the correct tool offset highlighted, we press the X diameter measure key and up comes a pop-up asking us to enter our current X diameter. Now, this is why we jogged so far away from the part a moment ago, to give us room to reach in with a set of micrometers and measure our newly turned diameter. Now, we measured 2.9705 inches, 75.45 millimeters. That is the X diameter position that our tool is currently at, and we know this because we just measured it. Now we'll go ahead and enter that value and the control does the rest for us. The tool offset that is calculated is the exact machine position required to put the tip of our tool directly on our part center line, X0. With the X set, we're gonna do something very similar to set the Z. We'll start up our spindle and carefully jog over to our part and lightly skim the face, making sure to move away only in the X axis. We can use the hand wheel for this, or we can just press and hold one of the axis selection buttons to automatically jog in that axis. Make sure you're on a slow increment. And we could have uh, done this earlier as we skimmed the outside diameter of our part as well. So we'll press the reset button, we'll stop our spindle, and with the proper tool offset highlighted, we can press the Z face measure button. The Z tool offset calculated is the exact machine position needed to put the tip of our tool right on our Z0 face. Now, technically, our manually set tool offset values are just the distance from our machine home position to our spindle center line and the part face where we touched off for, for any particular tool. Now, if you're on a TL machine, a tool room lathe, that setup is gonna look a little bit different the tool is going to be coming at the part from a different direction. On a TL, the X positive direction is towards the operator. Now to avoid any confusion, jog around a bit first until you get the feel for the axis directions. TL lathes also have an electronic hand wheel option with uh, automatic jog buttons and, and knobs that speed up and slow down the feed rates for us, which makes that kind of manual turning like we did just now really effortless. Before we move over to our work offset page and write a little bit of code to, to check our setup so far, we have two more essential columns on our tool offset page that need to be set. Now, certain operations and tool compensations need to know which direction our tool is facing in order to cut the part properly. And this is called our tip direction. This is an OD turning tool pointing in the X minus Z minus direction. So we'll select tip direction three. Now, if you are running a TL lathe, we would still choose a tip direction of three for this tool because it is still pointing in the X negative Z negative direction. Lastly, we need to fill out our tool radius geometry. Uh, that's the size of the radius on the tip of our insert. And we can find this information on the product page for any inserts that we buy. And it's also right in the part number written on the box of the insert itself. Now, these are our inch inserts, ANSI, ANSI inserts, and they are CNMG 432s. That last number, the number two, stands for 264 of an inch or 0 0.031 31 thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna enter 31 thou as our tool radius geometry. If this was a, an ISO insert, a metric insert, the number might look like CNMG uh, 120408, where that last number, the 08, means that the tool nose radius is 0 0.8 millimeters. So if we were in metric mode, we would have entered 0.8. Now, there is a lot that can be said about tool nose radius compensations, uh, too much. So we're gonna leave that for another advanced lathe programming video. Uh, I will say, however, that if you ever run a part that has lots of steps in it, lots of corner chamfers, and those chamfers have disappeared completely, leaving you with sharp edges, there's a good chance you probably have an incorrect value right there on your radius geometry column. So it does make a difference for your compensations. Again, we'll talk about that in a future video, but we will move that up on the list. Those are the basics of tool offsets. Now let's go ahead and toggle over to our, our work offsets for a minute. 
Now, a work offset is just a, um, a unique coordinate system used for a certain operation. We might use G54 for the first op on a part and G55 for the second op. Now, a, a tool offset is, is just an offset being used for one particular tool at a certain time. A work offset is more global. It's going to affect all of, your, all of your tools at once, and it's just a shift from where those tools were originally touched off. For now, we want to make sure that, that both our X and our Z G54 work offset are set to zero. Uh, we got to set them to zero for now. And we're going to look at this again after we've touched off the rest of our tools. Our next tool is a drill. Now, drills, taps, reams are on center tools. And the, the center of the tool and the tool's holder uh, need to be on center aligned with the spindle center line. We can find the center line of our, of our tool holders using a coaxial indicator. Now, coaxial indicators aren't prone to the indicator droop that you might see using a standard indicator. Now, finding the center of a hole takes practice, and we've made a complete video on this using all kinds of indicators, and we'll link to that in the description. Now, once we have found the X center of the holder, we'll navigate to the tool offset for our drill and press the X diameter measure button. Our tool holder is at X zero right now, and this is a lathe, so our X values are in diameter. So when we press the X diameter measure button and it asks for our diameter, we enter zero. To set the Z, we will load the drill back up and jog it up to the exact same Z face that we had turned with our OD tool earlier. That Z face will serve as the touch off location for all of our tools in this basic setup. We can use a piece of paper or shim stock to feel for contact as we carefully jog the tool up to the face in the Z. We can use the 0.001 jog increment or 0.0001 for better accuracy. Now, we jog until we feel the paper or the feeler gauge drag and then press the Z face measure button while highlighting our tool's offset. If you used a shim, you will need to subtract the thickness of the shim from your Z offset to account for it. Now we just touched off a pretty big drill. It's 32 millimeters in diameter, about an inch and a quarter. If we were, if we were setting a small drill, we might have used an ER32 extension that has the, the ER taper to it, but it would have been set up in the exact same way. Now our drills have no tip radius, so we'll enter zero for our radius geometry. And the tip direction, we're going to set to a seven because drills point in the Z minus direction. Now to be honest, drills don't make use of G42 and G41 compensations. So we could leave these columns blank. Um, but if we fill them in, it's not going to hurt anything. Just remember, most turning and boring tools do need this information, so I don't want to confuse you. But drills, eh, we could skip this. Next on our list is our boring bar. Now, we've been setting up all of our tools in a very specific order. We set up our OD turning tool first because we needed that Z face to set all of our tools against. And next, we have to uh, set up the drill because we need a drilled hole in order to set up our boring bar. We'll go ahead and use our boring bar to skim the inside diameter of our part, making sure that we jog straight away from our part using only the Z axis when we're done. Now, we're going to leave ourselves enough room to reach into that bore with a measuring tool, a, a bore gauge. Now, we are at 1.280 inches, 32.512 millimeters in diameter. We will once again highlight the tool that we're going to set and press that X diameter measure button. The tool is currently sitting at 1.280 inches. Uh, we know this because we just measured the bore and we have not moved the X at all. So we'll enter that and let the control do all the calculations. To set the Z on this boring bar, we've got to jog the tip of that tool up against our Z face again and press the Z face measure button. Now the insert on this boring bar has a nose radius of one, which is 15 thou and six tenths or 0.4 millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and enter that now on our radius geometry column. And we are approaching the part from the X plus Z minus direction. So we'll be using a tip direction of two. 
Other OD tools can be touched off in the same way. You don't always need to skim the part if you have a known diameter to work with. You could touch off with paper and enter the, the known diameter when the X diameter measure button is pressed. For threading tools, you can choose to set your Z value at the center of the cutting tip or at the edge of the insert. Now I've gone back and forth on this one. If I am threading clean up against a shoulder, I am definitely gonna touch off using the edge of the insert because I don't wanna accidentally hit this wall. For standard threads where there are no clearance issues, I may set my tool on the edge and then adjust my Z for that tool by half of the insert width. Now this insert is five millimeters wide, so I might adjust my Z by two and a half millimeters, 100 thou, putting the tip of our 60 degree insert on center, which would allow me to program the Z value on my, on my thread uh, with a number that matches the blueprint. Now go ahead and give us some feedback on this one. Uh, let us know what you're doing, how you touch off your threading tools in the comments. Okay, it is time to, to check our work and make sure that we touched off everything correctly. Trust but verify. We're gonna write a few lines of code in MDI that are gonna bring our tool in to verify those X and Z offsets. We'll jog to a safe tool change position well above our part and lower our rapid to 5%. Now we are gonna keep our finger on the feed hold button and keep our eyes moving between our position distance to go screen and our part as we prepare to run these commands. T202, G54, G0, Z.1, X3.2, M30. T202 is gonna cause a tool change to turret position two. The first number is our turret position, and the last two digits are the tool offset that's gonna be used. And they typically match, like T1111 or T0505. For more information on essential lathe G-codes, follow the link in the description to our Essential Nine Lines PDF. Now, it will list out the essential codes that you really need to understand before ever running a program in MDI. It also lists out the more advanced codes you should look at next. Okay, so now we're gonna put the machine in single block mode, which just means that we're gonna be executing, running one line of code at a time with each push of cycle start. We went ahead and put our X and Z commands on different lines so we can check them one at a time. Now we are watching our distance to go on the screen and I'm gonna press feed hold about an inch in front of our part. Now it says our distance to go is Z minus .4958, and that looks reasonable. We look like we've got about a half inch in front of the part, so we'll press a cycle start and continue. Now the program stopped again because we are in single block mode, and it says our distance to go is now Z zero, and that's because we have reached our Z destination. Z.1. We'll press cycle start again and watch the tool move forward towards the part again, this time along the X axis. Now I'm going to press feed hold right here as we near the part. And it says we have X minus 0.321 inches to go before we reach our X 3.2 destination, and that's in diameter. And that looks reasonable. If it didn't look reasonable, we would stop and check our offset. That is it. Now the tool went exactly where we told it to go. X 3.2, Z.1, and we can check that on our position page under programs. Now we just need to repeat this process for the rest of our tools, making sure that we change the T number to match whatever tool that we're checking. Now let's try something here. We'll go back to our work offset page and we're gonna set our G55 work offset to X0, Z1 inch. We'll then go back into MDI, and we're gonna change our G54 to a G55, and we're gonna see where it goes this time. Look where our tool is now, one inch to the right of where our tool was touched off. And it doesn't matter what tool we call up. They will all be affected by this changed work offset. Our first and our second operations will usually use different work offsets, maybe G54 for the first stop, G55 for the second op. This is because the part usually gets shorter for that second operation. 
For the second operation on a part, we will take any tool that has already been touched off. We'll jog it to our new part Z face and press the Z face measure button. We'll do this while highlighting our new work coordinate, G55 in this case. Okay, check this out. Our X diameter measure button, it only serves one purpose. It sets a tool's X diameter and only on the tool offset page. If we went over to the work offset page and press that button, it would do nothing. Now the Z face measure button, that's different. It has two purposes. If it's pressed while on the tool offset page, it will set the highlighted offset Z value. Now this only affects that tool. If pressed while on the work offset page, it will change your Z work offset, calculating an offset from where the tool is now compared to where it was touched off originally. Now the work offset will affect all of your tools when that coordinate system, like G55, is called up in your program. Now it's really important that we set all of our tools on the exact same Z face. And then we use one of those set tools to set our work offset. Now, some shops do it a little bit differently. They, they have a designated spot, maybe the face of their chuck, and they touch off all their tools there. And then they, they use one of those tools to set their work offsets with the Z face measure button. There's lots of different methods out there. We're showing you the basic method now. Now, this is not a video on probing, but I will say this. If you've got the automatic tool presetter, the ATP arm, you're not going to be using the X diameter measure or the Z face measure buttons when setting your tool offsets. And you're also not going to need this guy and you're not going to need this guy when setting up your tools. All that measuring is done for us by the control if you've got that option. Uh, you will still need the Z face measure button, but only when you're setting your, your work offsets. Well, that is it until next time. We hope that this video goes a long way and helping you get up and running on your new Haas lathe. And if you did get something out of the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that like button, and also check out our lathe certification program. We've got lots of good stuff in that series. Thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.